Okay, here is a subject that everybody wants to know more about. Now, what I'm going to show you is how I use the tools in Studio One's project page for mastering. So we're going to really get in deep on making sure that the tracks that we bring in are balanced right before we start putting effects on anything. So now, if you go back to my previous video where I showed how to bring in songs into the project page, this is going to continue with some really detailed um, methods that I use when it comes to mastering my songs. All right, let's see if we can get this done. If you guys could, I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It's a little click for you, but a big click for me and my channel, and you will get notified. Make sure you click the bell for uh, all of the notifications as I do videos. All right, so let's do this. So here we are in the Studio One project page. I have three songs, and I believe these are the same three songs from the previous video. If not, it really doesn't make any difference uh, because the method to bring them into Studio One is the same if the song is created in Studio One. All right, so let's just take a quick listen. Now you can you can hear some major differences between all three songs. This song is pretty much raw. There is no compression on anything. It's just the mix with all of the effects the way that I want it. Now this song was mastered a little, not mastered, but um, kind of the volume brought up in the song page, and then this song was actually mixed by someone else. Uh, that did the vocals for me. And so there is a big difference in some of the volumes that you hear, and we don't have any kind of processing going on on any of them, not even on the individual songs. So that's going to be the first thing. All right, so now you got this section over here, and then you've got the section for each of the individual songs. So what I'm going to show you is... If you're not like me and you don't balance things just by earshot, we can use these options here to really get a good feel for balancing out each of the three songs against each other. All right, so what are some of these options here and what do they mean? We got EBU R128. So that is explained here. This is from Wikipedia. And you can see here, EBUR128 is a recommended a recommendation for loudness, normalization, and maximum level of an audio signal. I'm just going to keep it right there. I'll uh, make this available to everybody in the description. And the, one, the R128 part employs an international standard for measuring audio loudness. And you guys can go ahead and read all of the details for both of these things on your own. But these are the basic understandings of what these measurements are. So if we actually go back here to the mastering page or to the project page, you can see that our levels are way different from one another. We have uh, 15.7, uh, and then we've got 10.4, and then we've got 11.5. Now, here is how I use these settings. And what I do is I use the event handles on each of the imported waveforms to balance these out. So I did a little bit of testing before this video, and what I discovered is that minus 16 gives me a pretty good range for all three of these songs so that they don't clip. So now, how do we actually achieve that? So let's go to the first song, which is at 15.7. So it's close, but it's got to come down a little bit because it does clip, I believe. That's close, but it's not quite clipping. All right, so now how do we get this to about 16? What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down just a couple of clicks, and I'm going to update the loudness. At 17, that's a little too much. So let me go up a couple of clicks. I can actually make this a little wider to give myself a little bit more room. Update the loudness. All right, 16.7. 
So let's see what song number two is at. It's at 10.4, so it is really louder. Uh, uh, really much louder than this one. All right, so let's see. Let me bring this down to here, and I'm going to update the loudness. And that's 13. We can actually go a little bit more. Update. Oh, we're getting close. Let's go a little bit lower. And update. Oh, okay, we got 16.2. I want to see if I can get a little closer. I'm just going to go down just another little click and update the loudness. All right, 16.7 and 16.7. Wow, that was lucky. All right, let's go to the last song. And this one is really loud also. So let's bring this down to about here and just take a wild guess. And there's 17, so this can come up just a little bit. Oh, 16.6. Okay, good. We're going to leave these at those measurements. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the loudest portions of each of these songs. And, of course, you really don't see any here because the whole thing's loud. And we're going to see how it sounds to our ears. Do they sound balanced? <laughs> Nice. Wow. It doesn't matter what you plan to do. Look at that. All right, so that actually turned out better than I could have hoped. So if you look at the um the loudness range, so now this song has more dynamics. So this song is going to have a higher number. All right, so now for the second song, you can see this is much lower because it is compressed already, but it sounds very good compared to the first song. Yeah, <laughs> my ears are loving the balance. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so if we go to the third song, you can see that this one is compressed, but it is not as, it is not lacking the dynamics that the second song is. So our uh, loudness, uh, our loudness range is a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and hear this. Another trip to 911. All right, let's go to the end. All right, so now let's hit all three songs one more time just to make sure our eyes are digging it. Now, you can see here that the uh, EBU level or the integrated <laughs> EBU is matching pretty much on the nose for all three songs so technically these songs should be ready for mastering Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, so if you look at the playback volume itself here, you can see that these are pretty consistent. All three songs are hitting between five, uh, six and seven. <laughs> Look at that. It doesn't matter what you plan to do. And you can even see here that um let me see, let me zoom in here. You can see here that the LRA is also 
very close on all three songs. There you go, about seven, six, five. Throw that stone. There we go. Now you're fully grown. Now, what does the LRA mean? It means this. This is the loudness range. So we've got these three songs probably about as balanced as they're going to get. Now, remember, this is pre-effects. We haven't had added any effects to any of these songs either in the master or on the individual songs themselves. All right, I'm going to make this shrink this down just a little bit so that we have some room. All right, so now this is the inserts for the post and the, um, and the main outs. So if I put anything on the inserts or on the post here, it's going to affect all three songs the same. If I feel I need to adjust any of these songs, you know, maybe a little bit of EQ, maybe even a little bit more compression so this one matches. Now, if I do that, you know, the waveform isn't going to change, but it will, it will actually change our loudness information. So I'm just going to leave them like this right now. So if I listen to all three songs, it's your decision. I am really not going to add anything to any of these songs because the I like the EQ and, I, and I'm, I'm very consistent when I do my mixes, thank goodness. And I like the EQ and I don't want to make any adjustments. All right, so if I want to bring up the volume on all of these songs at the same time, I can do this. I'm going to go ahead and click here or I can go to the browser, whichever one. I actually like doing this. And there is a limiter. So now, <laughs> I always keep the ceiling and the threshold at minus one. It's a preset that I made for the default. So now, if I want things louder, but I don't want them to clip, the, this limiter is going to keep the clipping out, and the input gain is going to bring up my volume. So let's start with the first song. Okay, so we're actually getting a little bit of reduction here. So the limiter is working. It's taking the peaks that would normally clip and turning them down. So how is that going to affect all of the other songs? You better think before you throw that stone. <laughs> Not bad. It doesn't matter what you plan to do. Now, of course, this one's going to have a few more peaks because there's no compression on this mix like there is on these two. Whoops. <laughs> what the heck did I do there? All right. So, once again. Okay, so the FFT is my favorite view for this area here. So watch this. Before you throw that stone, it's your decision. Another trip. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All three songs are very much in the same neighborhood, even with the limiter added. So remember, here is without the limiter. And here it is with. I would consider that a very good volume jump. So let's actually see what this says for each song. Your decision now, you're fully grown. Dismiss the love that you feel. 
Not bad. They're like within a couple of a couple of clicks within each other. One was nine, one was ten, and then this one is twelve. It really depends on the overall dynamics of the song and how it's reacting to the limiter. Now we could get into uh, deeper editing when it comes to EQ and making them all balanced. But if you listen, just use your ears. I think. Excuse me, I think all three songs, I got the hiccups now. I think all three songs are very well balanced against each other, and we've used the limiter to bring up the volume overall for all three songs, and we have used the loudness information to do the same. Now, I really only keep an eye on the pre-effects, and the reason why now it wants to update is because I added the limiter. So let's go ahead and do this. Watch this. Let's see what happens. I'm going to highlight all three of these, and I'm going to update all three at once. So this should be interesting to see how these numbers. I actually did not test this uh, test this before the video. So it's going to take a couple seconds here to actually get done. But you can see how useful all of this is. Now, you could use the RMS and the DC now, since I don't have any phasing issues. The DC looks fine. And uh, let's see, when this is done here, I really only use the EBU option here to get my balancing and making sure that the loudness um, is good or close on all of the songs I have for my master that I'm going to put out. We're almost done. Dang. All right. So now let's see. Song one. Look at that. 16.7. This is pre effects. 16.7 and 16.6. That has all remained the same. So now let's see the post effects. We have 11.8. We have 11.5. And we have 11.3. All right. So you can see that this is really helping us keep our balances between all of the different songs these uh, all three of these songs come from totally different environments this comes from studio one six this comes with, uh, from an old song from studio one four and this one actually comes from my friend rob kane who did the vocals and he just sent it to me like this and i brought it in here so there we go. You can see how useful some of this loudness information is to really make sure that if you are going to add a limiter or any other method to increase your volume, there's a lot of good third-party stuff out there too. I prefer to just use the limiter in Studio One to actually do all of this, and it works out good for my needs. So I hope that that was helpful in showing you how to get balances uh, with multiple songs in your project page, uh, the next video I will actually show how to do the different images, maybe even burn a CD, um, and I'll do a digital release as well. So stay tuned for that. I hope that this was helpful, and I'll see you all in the next video.